Transparency is a big part of government, it should be a big part of government. There's an issue brewing, though, in Governor Jack Markell's office over the use of a private email that forms the conversation for our first person segment this week. Newark Democrat Representative John Kowalko is here along with John Flaherty of the Delaware Coalition for Open Government. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, for those who haven't been following this, let's just kind of set the table of, of where the situation is. How did you find out that the governor has this sort of not sort of, but uh, a, a secret email, a pseudonym that he uses yeah, to get email. It's actually a secret email address for a state account, which is where it becomes uh, either unethical or illegal, can be, can be the context. I found that out because uh, I had uh, solicited a, a huge amount of uh, FOIA, uh, through FOIA emails about the Priority Schools Network. And as I went through uh, hundreds and hundreds of pages of the, of the, of the FOIA requests, I noticed there, were, there was nothing from the governor personally. Uh, and I, at, at first I, I thought, well, maybe I'm missing something, but I couldn't find any email. So I, I thought, well, he's either not in touch with this issue, but it's too important. He was on the steps of Warner or, or, or somehow uh, we're not getting all the information. Uh, and as I mulled over my next action on that, I, I noticed an article in the paper Jonathan Starkey wrote talking about a pseudonym the governor used. So it dawned on me that if I had ac didn't have access to that pseudonym, I may be shuffled away on my FOIA request from that account itself. So I, the first thing I decided to do was let me find out what the pseudonym is. So I filed a FOIA request with John, uh, uh, with John Flaherty, uh, to divulge the, the pseudonym. And in the, in the course of the response to that, after the 15 days, which is not mandatory to FOIA, but something we have to clean up because it's used sometimes to delay the answer. Instead of receiving an answer, here's the pseudonym that he uses, uh, it, it was a, almost a convoluted letter from uh, Andy Lipson, his lawyer, that said, uh, uh, this is uh, the worst kept secret in, in Delaware. They acknowledged they had a, they were using a pseudonym, but it was, and they tried to justify why that shouldn't be made public. Well, that just certain, certainly contradicts the uh, intentions of the FOIA and transparency if you don't have that. And that's not being accusatory. Some people might say, well, what do you have to hide by using that? And I'm not saying that, but I do want to know what it is. And then right. they said, well, you can get it out there. It's already out there, public knowledge. Well, no, no. Well, when you file a FOIA request, any citizen should be able to get an answer to that FOIA request and not have to run circles and do his own investigation. So, so, that's so John, from an open government standpoint, what's the issue? What's, what's the problem with the governor having, uh, A, a, a secret email that nobody else really knows about, B, with it being a, a pseudonym and not his actual name? Well, other than the fact he's not allowed to have secret email accounts, and this is a state.de.us email account, uh, the whole purpose of the open government law is to allow public officials, uh, public, the media, to monitor the activities of our elected officials. And uh, there are specific exemptions in the law for what's public and what's not, and there's nothing in there that allows this to be uh, secret or non-public. So uh, this is a public issue, and um, I'm hoping that the governor will eventually comply with this. I think he's been given bad legal advice. It's done a lot to help out with the open government over the years. And I think this issue here is uh, uh, an issue that uh, he, he needs to uh, just step up and, and, come and comply with uh, Representative Kowalka's letter. We got a statement from the governor's office uh, in, in regards to this issue uh, for this interview. Uh, and his office sent over the statement saying, this is standard practice used by past Delaware governors to manage dozens or hundreds of email received from the public every day. Uh, they say it is no different than having a direct dial phone extension distinct from the main office number. What, what's your response to that response from the governor? Well, my response to that is very simple. Uh, a, even a direct dial phone, if there were a record kept of it, that would be foiable too if it discussed government policies and if it was in an official capacity. So there is no uh, exemption for, uh, for uh, you want to be uh, discreet uh, let's go, if you're talking about uh, or discussing government policies and issues. That's all, that's all foible. Uh, the fact is that it's impractical to say that you would have some kind of a record of a phone conversation. So to FOIA that, you would just certainly get an answer that we don't have that available. And I can appreciate that. But in the age of emails, in the age of written correspondence, uh, there is absolutely a requirement that when we're discussing, when we're using official state email, 
and when we're using it to discuss any kind of policy issues or, or interagency dialogues, that's foible. And, and, I, and I find that this intransigence to the letter of the law uh, almost what makes one suspect that uh, what, are, what are they hiding? And I've, been, I've been received a lot of email support and they, they basically say, if you have nothing to hide, why wouldn't you give out this, this email address? Because I still would have to, and I think uh, the News Journal actually tried to uh, solicit some uh, a FOIA request, but they were, it was considered too broad. So now uh, John and I have sent in another FOIA request, which specifically asks for any of the uh, any of the documents under that uh, that pseudonym that have been sent to the other governors, because in his letter in reference to me, uh, the the governor's attorney contended that he's been seeking advice from other governors outside the state, uh, uh, you know how they work, how their policies are. That's a moot point. It's not about outside the state. And as a matter of fact, uh, those emails are subject to FOIA too. So I'm going to be requesting them. It's a, uh, it's a Delaware it's all, a Delaware issue. Right, it's a Delaware issue, it's a Delaware FOIA law, and, it, and it's not, and it's out of compliance. The governor's office is out of compliance with it, not asking this. Uh, the trouble with FOIA requests and the answers and responses we've gotten have been, have been almost, they've been used, the FOIA laws have almost been used to obstruct rather than facilitate. That's what they're there for, to facilitate. So you can go in easily and get the information you want without muss or fuss, not to uh, search or gotcha or, or play, place a kind of a fishing expedition, you know. But the, Mark, the emails are, are this e secondary email address, this secret email address, is foiable, though, correct? Yes. Or, so, so the issue is that we didn't, the public didn't know about its existence to know to f to issue or and to you submit have to be a very FOIA. Very specific when you make FOIA requests, you can't go on fishing expeditions. But to the uh, governor's point about the, the telephone calls, there is a presumption of privacy on telephone calls. There is not a presumption of privacy for public documents, and uh, under, under state law, there are specific exemptions for specific documents, and there is no exemption for the governor's email account there. Are we better off today than we were eight years ago in the framework of open government than, than from the start of, of Governor Markell's term? There was a, a state integrity survey done uh, several years ago that you participated mm -hmm. in that, that gave Delaware pretty weak grades for, for open access to public information. Are we any better off than we were at the start of Markell's first term? I think we are. I mean, the governor signed the bill, including the General Assembly under FOIA, and he's done a couple of other, other issues. And I think he's been good on most open government issues. But when you come down to specifics uh, on this issue here about the emails, issues regarding uh, permits at the refinery, I uh, foia uh, uh, public documents at the refinery. Half the documents are, are secret, and I can't understand why. But uh, I think on these two issues here, I think he's fallen down. But on other issues, I think he's done a, a terrific job on, on for you. Uh, I'd like to, uh, to address that also. I think the, uh, the wonderful work of opening more uh, things to FOIA, such as Bob, uh, Speaker Gilligan did and, and insisted on doing, which was the uh, Joint Finance Committee, all of those discussions about it. That was wonderfully and wonderfully specific. But our FOIA laws do not, are not satisfying to me because they've been used, instead of the 15-day window being a, a, a normal uh, time period that you can acquire the information. If you have the information at hand, they're still taking the 15 days. Then they're always also tacking on exorbitant fees some, in some cases, depending on the asker of the FOIA. And, and I find these things uh, uh, abusing the, the intention of the FOIA law. And it, in fact, become, it becomes an obstruction to open government. We have to reform it a little bit. We have to make sure that there are not loopholes that can be used to abuse, but loopholes that can be closed so that we have a much more smoother transition from public knowledge and public requests for that knowledge about policy issues and those issues being given to the public. Let me go back to the, to the uh, more from the governor's statement. Uh, in mm -hmm. response to all this, uh, he, we talked about him, them being uh, subject to FOIA, all of his email accounts, uh, and he sort of calls out you, uh, Representative Kowalko, saying that uh, your emails are truly secret because the General Assembly, unlike the executive branch, uh, exempts its emails from public record well, that's requests. That's a petty what? response. I mean, J John Kowalko has been a 
huge supporter of open government and transparency. He was not involved in the efforts to keep the secret email accounts of the General Assembly. That was uh, from the leadership. So I, that's a cheap shot there. I don't, I don't particularly like should, that. Should the General Assembly's emails be open as, as the government? Uh, at the are? time that we passed the, the new FOIA bill, the extension of FOIA, I offered an amendment that our emails should be FOIAble also. We can easily redact personal constituent issues, uh, uh, personal issues that, that it should be. But as far as public policy, state policy, interagency dealings, I willingly give my voice. I'll redact the uh, confidentiality where it's necessary for the individuals uh, that, that are outside the system that might email me. But if, if I have a request for, for an email that, about a dialogue I've had about policy issues, I will release that because I don't agree with that decision that we made. That was an amendment that was put in. And, and, and the, at the time, the majority leader, I believe, uh, uh, Schwarzkopf and I had, had a major disagreement. It was, in the, it was in the newspapers. I said, we should have these open. And, and so I, 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 in a way, I, I get a little offended that the governor references that when he knows my history of not only having tried to change that, where it would be for my emails would be for on issues of government, uh, but also that I'm willing to give those emails if, if it's specifically requested and I have those in, in my docket because I think that it's only fair that the, the public understands how we reach the decision and not because the public, I expect the public to catch us doing something wrong. I think it, it builds confidence. If the public can sit there and say, oh, they had a legitimate dialogue about this issue, it makes it much more tolerable for them to understand when we make, when we make a decision that may disaffect them a little bit in other ways, but they, they realize there's a logic to it. It only helps us. It protects us. And I imagine we have not heard the last of this issue. Gentlemen, I really appreciate your time. Very interesting conversation. Representative John Kowalko and John Flaherty of the Delaware Coalition for Open Government, thank you so much for being thank you, here. Mark. Thank you, Mark.